Y'all, I'm so mad <laughs> because I literally recorded the whole thing already discussing this from start to finish. And then it just didn't say to my computer, but whatever. I'm going to try and give you all the same energy that I had. But if you're new here, please subscribe. If you're not new and if you are new, thumbs up the video. Drop the comments down below. I like to have the conversation going. I'm going to be here all season talking about it. I'm going to be here all until YouTube decides to no longer want to mess with me or me no longer want to mess with YouTube. I'm going to be here talking about track. I'm going to be here all week for sure, for sure. But we're going to talk about today's events. We got the 200s for the men and the women, the semifinals for the women, the men heats. And then we got the 400 flat heats for the women. We got the 400 heats, hurdles, heats for the men. And then I want to talk about Mondo DePlantis, who just broke his world record again, winning gold <laughs> in the pole vault. Uh, Keely Hodgkinson, she just took home her first gold medal. Finally, she finally got a gold. Pure domination in the 800. And then Faith Kipiegon, we don't know what's about to happen with her. She done got DQ'd, finished the race in silver medal position. She might not even get it. She bet her own countrymen, beat her, ran her down on the line. Safan Hassan, they got she got bronze. It's a lot going on. The drama is on the track, but. Let's go ahead and get on into this. Let's go. So we start with Rye Benjamin in the 400 hurdles this morning, 4 a.m. I woke up to watch this. I was in and out sleeping. But um, Rye Benjamin is him, Kyron McMaster, in this first heat. Simply put, Rye was comfortable coming home. Um, he was second to the – he was second to, like, every hurdle until, like, eight. When he got to eight, he took the lead. Then he kept looking around to the sides to make sure nobody was up on him so he can shut down. Comfortable, comfortable win. 48-82 for Rye. Kyron McMaster at 49-24. And Jaheel Hyde of Jamaica, 49-08 for second. So those are the big cues going on to the next round, which is the semifinals for the 400 hurdles. We're really just going to talk about the big three in the hurdles, to be completely honest with you. In the next heat was Karsten Warholm, who is the Olympic champion, reigning the world record holder. The Viking, he looked like himself. Like, he looks like he's ready to run some crazy, crazy stuff. He put up a time, 47-57, to win his heat. Simple, easy. Trevor Bassett of the U.S. was in this. He was in fifth place. So, he got to run in the repechage, which I'm assuming is Wednesday. So, he's got, he's got a fight on his hands to get out. But Karsten, he's on to the semifinals. In the next heat, we got C.J. Allen of the United States, who I hope makes the final. I don't see him breaking up the big three, but I hope he's just in that final. But if he does, he does. Good. But I just don't see it, but we'll see. But Allison Dos Santos, he finished third in his heat, 48-75. C.J. Allen second, 48-64. They move on to the semifinals. We're going to see what's going to happen there. We're going to talk about Sean Bailey because I told y'all yesterday in the in the clip, he was going to the repechage. And I'm like, I think he's going to get out of it. And I thought he was going to get out of it. But he pulled up at like maybe not even – he might have pulled up at like maybe 100 meters. Maybe. Maybe. And it might not even be that. Maybe, maybe 80 or 90. But he pulled up. I hope he's okay because that's going to be a big blow to Jamaica's 4x4. Four four. He's not going to move on. I just knew he was going to move on to the semifinals. I didn't know if he was going to get in the finals, but I definitely saw him in the semifinals. But it sucks. That's Veronica Campbell Brown's younger brother. So big ups to him, sending prayers up to him, hoping everything is good with him. Hopefully he's not seriously injured. But let's move to the 400s for the women. First heat, we got Sawa E. Nasser. We got Stacey Ann Williams. And we got our, the USA's, current Olympic trials champion, Kendall Ellis, in this. Kendall was saying affirmations to herself the whole time she was standing there waiting on the gun to go off. I love that. Speak it into, speak it into existence because sometimes that's all you need to calm yourself down because she probably was nervous. But she ended up fifth. Like, she did not look – I don't want to say she looked, didn't look comfortable, but she definitely didn't. She wasn't the Kendall Ellis that we saw back at trials because trials, she was running through them rounds PR. But um, she – is in fifth, 51-16. Sawa Nasser, she looked good. She looked like she was back. She looked like she getting back to form, like how she looked a couple years ago, some years ago. Stacey Ann Williams, she was killing it. She was she was pretty much winning off the turn, the second turn, coming home down the straight. But 50-16 was her time going into the semifinal. Sawa Nasser, she 49-91 in the heats, sub-50 in the heats. 
She ain't the first. She ain't the only one, but she was the first one. In the next seat, we got Nikisha Price versus Lavia Nielsen, who is the twin sister of Lena Nielsen, who is in the 400 hurdles. So it's funny that they're both twins running 400 events. But she's in the flat. She uh, looked good. 50-36 to win second place. Nikisha Price. That is my... She's in my she's in my podium. I don't know where I would put her, but she's on my hunt for gold. I feel like she is the one that could challenge Paulina. I do. <clears throat> Even with all the, the racing that she has in her legs, because we know she ran a full collegiate season, indoor and outdoor. She got a lot of 400s in her legs, but she still looks like she's in top form. She's in good shape. She's 23 years old, so I feel like she's got. I feel like she's in good form. I feel like she's in good form. She ran this super duper reserved, super controlled, 502 simple. It looked like she had so much more in the tank. We know she does because she can run 48. So good for her. Good for Lena. Uh, not Lena. Lavia. They're through to the semifinals. In the next heat, we got Amber Anning, who is also a teammate from college for Nikisha Price. Amber Anning, she represents Great Britain. And then we got Lika Cliver, who is no stranger to 400 finals. Like, she's been there over the last couple of years. She's just got to worry about holding up enough to come home. She always is there in the conversation for gold coming in at, like, 300 meters. That last 100, she always tends to fade. But both of them really, really cool, really, really calm, really, really collected both ran 49s, 4968 for Amber, 4996 for uh Clover. And they look like they have more in the tank, so that's that's good. We know that that final is going to be something. They might Are they going to run 47s? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Crazier things have happened. But they're moving through to the semifinals. <clears throat> in the next heat, we had um Shawnee Miller-Rebo. She's in that heat, which is our reigning Olympic champion. Two times Olympic champion, but she's the current reigning champion. We know she had a baby recently. She's been injured, so she's trying to come back, but she pulled up in this. And it sucks because I don't. I feel like she finished the race. I saw something online that said she would be qualified to run in the repertoire, but we'll see. Because with her pulling up, it looks like it might have possibly had something to do with maybe a little injury. So if she's injured, I don't see her wanting to run the repertoire, but we'll see if it is true that she qualified. We'll see. But in this heat, also with her are two girls that are no slouches. We got Natalia Kaczmarek of Poland. We got Barbados and Sade Williams. They ran really, really good, especially Natalia. She, 49.98, she was looking around, making sure nobody was coming behind her. She had a lot more in the tank. So for her to run 49, we already know she can run 48 because she broke her. She ran a PB at her last, I feel like that was her last meet, back in London at the London Diamond League. So we know she's going to be in the conversation for a medal. So she looked good as well as uh, Sade Williams. And the last heat we're going to talk about is the heat with the supermodels, <laughs> Rashida Adeleke and Alexis Holmes. Both of them girls, beautiful to give the modeling contracts. Like, it's crazy. Track girls are the most beautiful women in sports. But um, Rashida, we knew she was going to win super calm, super quick. She's always in the conversations, but she's really in the conversation for gold because she's been looking absolutely amazing this year. She's looked great in college, but she really is looking good for her first pro season. Alexis Holmes, she was pretty controlled as well. She looks good. She is going to be in that final if you ask me. I feel like if she continues to run it the way she's been running it, she's going to be good. She's going to be good. I don't know if she's going to get a medal, but crazier things have happened. I see her in the final, though. But these two moved on 5009 for Rashida and Alexis Holmes 5035. Big cues on to the finals. <clears throat> I didn't talk about the heat, but now that we're here, we're going to talk about the fastest qualifiers, which was none other than the world champion Paulino, Mer Lady Paulino. She ran the fastest qualifying time 4942. She's the big cue going into the semifinals. And we already know, like I said, we got Paulino, we got Amber Annie, we got Sawa Nasser, we got. Lika Cliver, Natalia Kashmir, Nikisha Price, Rashida Adelaide, Stacey Ann Williams, Alexis Holmes. That's that's gonna be tough to figure out who's gonna be in that final. <clears throat> it's gonna be a dog fight, but the semifinals is next up on the plate. But we we got some good stuff going for the women's four hundred. 
And I do want to confirm, shout out to Travis Miller. He did confirm that Shawnee Miller Rebo is entered to run in the Repishage round tomorrow morning. So we'll see her. Hopefully all goes well and she will move on to the semifinals. And hopefully she'll get to the finals because that will make it even better. Because who doesn't want to see the reigning champion defend her title? So good for her. All right, so now we're going to talk about the men's 200 heats. The men's 200 heats have started today. We got Wade Van Kirk. That's one of my favorites. Probably my favorite 400 runner of all time. He's the current world record holder, 2016 Olympic champion. He is running and focusing on the 200 at the Olympics. He's not running in the 400 at the Olympics. So I'm very excited for him. I want him in that final. I don't think he's going to get a medal for sure. But I definitely want him in that final. But he looks good. He looked good running in this heat. <clears throat> he ran 2042. Joseph Fambule was also in this heat. He won the heat. 2020 both of them look good um it's gonna be interesting to see in these semifinals that's just really what it is i really can't say too much now because it's gonna be really interesting interesting to see what everybody else is gonna put together and how much they really have in the tank for the semifinals to push for the finals but both of them look good they're through to the semifinals and the next uh heat we got is let's see let tobogo as i told y'all last night in the last couple videos at the 100 I always feel like he has so much more that he could really put out. And it's like it's so much easier for me to say that watching him run because he runs so comfortable. It looks like he has so much more that he's just keeping back here that he could really let out. If what I'm thinking is true, I can't wait for him to actually do it. But the 200 is his best event. He's just got to fix that turn, even though he ran a very good turn in this heat. He ran a very good turn. It could definitely be a lot better, but he ran a very, very good turn. 2010, he was off the gas at like 170, coming home, super, super chill. He ran 2010 into a negative, so it was a point one, but it was into a negative. Easy. Uh, Benjamin Richardson, he pulled up halfway through the race, which sucks because I would have loved to see him run. But Tobago is through, easy. He's in my medal contention. I feel like he can really challenge for gold, if you want to ask me, but he's definitely in the medal conversation. But, yeah, he's moving on. No shock there. And the next heat, we got Kenny Bednarik and Zarnell Hughes was in the heat, but he didn't start. So that sucks. That sucks. Um, but Kenny, he got a chip on his shoulder. Kenny is going to, he's the one that could challenge Noah. And I feel like he's really going to challenge Noah considering the fact that he wanted a medal in that 100. He ain't just getting that final and was like, I'm happy to be here. He wanted to be <laughs> on that podium. So the fact that he didn't, He's got all that extra, like, I don't want to say animosity, but he got all that extra, like, gump, like gumption just coming through, wanting to win. So, he ran, which Otto confirmed on the broadcast. This was the first time in Olympic history that we've had a heat where somebody's dipped under 20 seconds, and he ran 1996. And he was cool and coming home. Cool and coming home. We know he got so much more in the tank. This is his better event, so I'm looking forward to him in the semifinals, especially in the finals, because I feel like he is definitely going to put something crazy out there on the line. And he could very well shock Noah Lyles. But um, Terrace Orgot, he got into – he won his heat wearing some SpongeBob socks. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. But he is on to the semifinals. He's going to be good. He's going to be one to watch out for. In the next heat, we got Arian Knighton, who has not run so much this season. We know why. I don't need to talk about it again, but – He's here. This is his best event. He ran 1999. That's the second time in the heats, in the 200 for the men, that somebody's dipped under 20 seconds. Sean Maswangani, he was there. He run. He runs a very nice turn. He got his big Q through. 2020 was his time. Aaron Brown was just outside of it again. But they're through to the semifinals. Also into the next heat, which is the big heat, which I found crazy that they stuck the current Olympic champion, big dog, Andre DeGrasse, one of my favorite sprinters, stuck him in there with Noah Lyles, who is the favorite to win in the current <laughs> Olympic 100-meter champion, newly crowned. So we got Olympic champ up against Olympic champ. So this was interesting. Um, we knew the both of them was going to be smooth through. Andre had to work a little bit harder coming home to secure his second spot. But he was in the top three. He ran 2030. Noah ran 2019. 
smooth through to the finals. I want Andre in that final. I feel like he will get in that final. I want him to challenge and defend his title for real, like defend that thing, make this man work for it because he beat him at the last Olympics. Noah got bronze, but it's, it's looking good. It's looking good. We got a pretty, pretty exciting semifinal to look forward to, and then the final is going to be good, but we're going to move now to the semifinals for the women's 200 meters. The first semifinal was a big three that we knew was going to be the big three. And I had it in order how it actually panned out. Juju, the current indoor champion, 60 meters, and the current 100 meter Olympic champion. Yes, we're going to talk about that for the next four years. Love it. Congratulations to her. She deserves it. She's running with no pressure. Like, that's the most dangerous thing in the world, having somebody like her running with no pressure. Like, she's a beast in the 100, but she's a beast in the 200 as well. So, and then looking at how she ran in London, the way she ran in London, she literally lost the race on the line to Gabby Thomas, her biggest threat. And she, Gabby had to come get her, and she literally out her on the line. So, considering the fact that Gabby is hungry, this is going to be, this is setting up a very, very big, big semifinal, big final for the 200. With the presence of Sharika being gone, it kind of tainted it a little bit. But knowing that these two girls have already went neck and neck and it came down on the line, and then now knowing that Julian has now won the 100 meters, she's the Olympic champion there, she's got no pressure, but she's also got like the, uh, like, I'm really that girl now, like, come get me. Like, I'm in this one, I'm about to go take your medal too. So she's got that type of energy that she can really put forth on this ground. And then you got Gabby, who is coming in now as the favorite because she was a clear silver medal favorite. But considering how she's been running all year this year and how Sharika was running all year this year, she was looking like the gold medal favorite for sure, for sure. And she wants that gold medal. She's made it a point to make that be known. But it's going to be very interesting. Julian ran pretty, pretty smooth. She was off the gas coming home, 21.98. She done dipped under 22 in the heats or in the semifinals. Simple and easy. Favor Ophelia, also dangerous because she was supposed to run to 100 and her country let her down by not entering her in. So now she's pissed because she could have possibly factored into that final. But now she's going to be running in this 200 like, I got to get my get back. I got to get a medal because I just lost a chance of getting one in the 100, not by my doing, but by my country's doing. And I want to actually get a medal now. So she's tough. And she ran 22.05 to secure second. The big Q going on. Mackenzie Long, our favorite America's sweetheart now because I've been watching her. Like I said, I've been watching her for the last three years. I knew that she was coming. So I'm excited that she's here. She was third coming off the turn. I was like, Mackenzie, just push it, push it, push it. I was hoping that her time was going to get her through to that final, which luckily it did. But she had to wait for it. 2230, she posted that up. Mackenzie's got a lot of races in her legs. Like Sonya said, 36 races. She ran a whole collegiate season, indoor and outdoors. And she ran the one and the two at NCAA. She ran it at, uh, well, no, she didn't run the one at SECs. But she ran the two at SECs. But she got a lot of racing under her. Just pretty much put, that, put it that way. She got a lot of racing in them legs. And this is her first international meet. And it's the Olympics, the biggest meet that any track athlete could ever have. So it's a lot of pressure on her. But for her to get to the finals in her first Olympic appearance, Mama is watching over her, and I feel like she gonna guide her. She gonna guide her. But we move to the next heat. The next heat had Gabby Thomas versus Dina Asher Smith. Dina Asher Smith, 2019 world champion in this event. She gonna always run a turn. I was like, she gonna she gonna kill Gabby on this turn. That's what I was thinking watching. I'm like, she gonna kill it. Gabby caught her ass on that turn, and Gabby is not the best turn runner. Her best part of her race is the back half of her race. So for her to get up on Dina. She did what she needed to do so that she can then cruise home because nobody's catching her. Nobody in this heat was catching her. Nobody was catching her. And that's what she did. She got off the gas pretty, pretty, pretty quick, which is why it's crazy that she ran 2186. 2186. Sharika's like 20. What's her? Sharika's uh, PB is 2141. And that's the closest to Flojo. I don't think Gabby could get there. But then again, she could because like. Jogging 28, 2186, essentially jogging that. She got something in the tank. And Gabby is super hungry. So I feel like she very she could make me eat crow. <laughs> she could make me eat my words. And I lucky hope she does. 
But Gabby, she got a, she got a point to prove. Um, the last heat that we have is Brittany Brown versus Daryl Nita. Daryl, I didn't expect her to win this because she done ran three rounds in the 100. She was in the final, finished fourth. She done ran a heat of the 200. She's got a lot of races in her legs, whereas Brittany Brown has only won a heat. She's only ran one heat. And she's fresh, essentially. And Brittany Brown, she's going to always thug it through. Like, she's going to always find a way to get to that line. And she she was right there with Daryl coming off that uh, turn. But she ran 22-12 to win her heat. And Daryl was right there behind her in second, uh, 22-24. So these two are through to the finals. And like I said, Mackenzie Long got through to the finals. So we're good there. The uh, finals, let's go ahead and say it. The final qualifiers are Gabby Thomas, Julian Alfred, Favor O'Feely, Brittany Brown, Daryl Nita, Mackenzie Long, Dina Asher Smith, and Jessica Gabay, I believe I'm saying it. Hopefully I'm saying it right. But the lane assignments, we this isn't official, at least I don't think it is yet, but I heard some rumblings of the lane assignments, and this is going to make a big difference on who is going to win or at least have a good shot to win. Mackenzie is in lane two. They fucked her over. <laughs> she got a lot to work through. She got a lot to work through. That's the worst lane to be in, but... She got her mama watching over her. If anything, she can pull her through. Crazy things can happen, but anything can happen because this is a this is a pretty stacked final. But Dana Asher Smith is in four. Daryl Nita is in five. Brittany Brown is in six. Gabby is in seven. Julian is in eight. Julian's in the prime. She's in the prime position, if you ask me. Because with her being out front, I feel like Gabby would do better if Gabby was in front. Because she would make Julian come get her. She's not going to have to chase Julian, which we all know. She's a 60-meter champ for a reason. That six, The first 60 meters is hers. And as we saw last night, or the night before last, she knows how to close. And she can finish it. So, Gabby going to have to chase her again like she did in London. We'll see if she actually gets on the line again. But Favreau Philly's out there at nine. She's got, she on a mission. So, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, but... If y'all made it this far, please thumbs up the video. Please drop a comment down below because I just did this two times, y'all. Two times. That's 40 minutes of talking. My mouth is on fire. <laughs> but I will see y'all tomorrow. Um, not bright and early because I don't really care to get on here that early considering what's going to be in the morning. But y'all going to see me at night. And then Wednesday is going to be on and popping because we got the 100 hurdles, the 110s. Like, it's going to be good. But, yeah, I will see y'all then. Have a good night. Peace.